David is telling me we are live on Facebook. Welcome to people as they're signing on. I know it takes a minute and we are a few minutes behind, but we're so excited to invite you all to this moment online. Those of you who are here with us for our annual kid-led gathering. We are so excited. Can I get a crowd cheer? <laughs> We're so excited to have our kids. They've been working so hard, practicing their readings, writing reflections, singing, and we're so excited to have them come up in just a moment and lead the rest of the service. I did want to remind you all that are on Facebook and those of you in person that the best way to know what's going on in the life of our community is to get on our email list. So feel free to um, let us know if you're not on that list, but that's how you know what's going on in, in our hemisphere. So um, let's see, what's, David's gonna drop the links to the guide. So that's how you will know. He's like looking at me. I'm gonna work on it, He's yeah. gonna work on dropping the link to the guide. <laughs> You can actually get the QR code and then just paste it in. Cool. Okay, so the link to the guide is coming, incoming. We also want to invite you to go get your communion elements. If you have not gotten a communion element at home, go get something to bite and to sip and join us for communion in just a few moments. Is there anything else? That's it. Okay, we're so excited to have y'all here. Thanks again for, for joining us. y'all. Um, as always, we invite you to sing along. This is Cozy. This is Cozy. She is five and a half years old and she is going to be leading us in singing Good Shepherd. Oh, yes. Cheers and, and, uh, and clapping are highly encouraged. Okay? Yes. <laughs>
just being patient with all the transitions. We obviously have a lot of people of differing heights, so we're having transition moments, and there is no such thing as an awkward moment. There's just a moment. That was Connor. Thank you, Connor. This is Temple. All right.
mostly. If you need a communion element, raise your hand and someone will bring it to you. Okay. The fruits of the Spirit are also known as the characteristics of God. They are things we should demonstrate to one another. If they are all of God and all things we should demonstrate to one another, then there is no better symbolism of this than communion. Communion is all of us, no matter our background, gender, or anything else, coming to the table to partake together. I chose to talk about self-control because I believe self-control is very critical in everyday life. I mean, just imagine a world without self-control. If we did just whatever we wanted without thinking of anyone else or about the consequences of our actions, things wouldn't turn out so well. For example, let's say no one had any self-control and everyone just ate all the ice cream they wanted. Two terrible <laughs> things would happen. One, if everyone ate a bunch of ice cream, we'd all get sick. And two, the demand for ice cream would go up causing the ice cream industry, the ice cream industry wouldn't be able to keep up, causing the world of ice cream to fall apart. Eventually, this will lead to no more ice cream. It'd be a tragedy. Just think, all of your favorite flavors, mint chip, chocolate, strawberry, vanilla, all of it gone. I know, I just couldn't bear to live in a world like this. One example of how I practice self-control as real life is when I really want to eat gummy candy. I have braces, so I can't eat gummies because they will get stuck in my teeth and cause cavities. Controlling my craving for gummies is hard, especially when my parents eat gummies every night after dinner. And I just have to sit there and watch them eat the delicious candy, not being able to have any. I try to, my, to refrain myself from thinking of a mouthful of cavities every time I want to eat gummies. This helps me not want gummies anymore because I definitely don't want cavities underneath my braces. You can also practice self-control in your life by simply trying to refrain yourself from, thing, from unhealthy things you might want. Try walking away, not looking at it if it's food. And after a while, self-control will become easier the more you practice it. Self-control contributes in making the world a better place because people could become more healthy and can learn to develop good habits just by practicing self-control. Self-control is also about choosing to do something, such as exercising or counting to ten before you say the first thing that comes to your mind when you are annoyed or angry. <laughs> Making these better choices over and over can help become habits. I also think self-control helps connect us to God because self-control gives us more room to open our hearts to others and treat them with the other fruits of the Spirit, such as love and kindness. This is how all of the fruits of the Spirit are connected. So in conclusion, if you don't want to decrease the supply of ice cream, or you just want to practice good habits, try having self-control. Remember, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. Please join me in prayer. God, as we come together today, we pray that we, have, we will have self-control that comes from you in order to love others just as you would. We pray for guidance and wisdom when faced with obstacles in our life that require self-control. Amen. Will you please join me in the litany? I'll read the regular print if you follow in the bold. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. I now invite you to partake in your elements. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ died, died, Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again.
my name is Haddon, and I'm doing the children's sermon. Can all of the kids come down? start I'm going to read the fruit of the spirit verse but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law. Galatians 5:22. what is the fruit of the spirit I'm going to hand around some paper to color the fruit of the spirit on later Who has a garden? Who has a garden? What what do you grow in? What do you grow in, Echo? Um, we grow flowers and we think that we have a blueberry Oh yeah, blueberry Okay. Anybody else have a garden? Wallace, do you have a garden? What do you grow in? What do you grow in your garden? Garden, Wallace. Uh, tomatoes. Yeah. Tomatoes. <laughs> Anybody else? of the spirit and not rocks of the spirit. <laughs> Fruit takes work to grow. Rocks don't. You have to water each tree or plant each day or it'll get weak. And then there are weeds. Weeds are things like being mean, hating, and being rough. They don't need nurture and they grow fast. Weeds are bad. They destroy your garden. This will not happen to you. <laughs> if I were doing something kind, could a police officer come over and arrest me? No. No. Because Galatians 5.22 states, Against such things there is no law. Imagine if there was a kitten stuck in a tree. You're helping it out when a police officer come up, comes over and says, hey, you're under arrest. You can take out your Bible and say, this says that I can do nice things without getting in trouble. And the police officer <laughs> wouldn't be able to arrest you. <laughs> this means not everybody understands this, and it's our job to show them. What fruit of the Spirit was this bear showing when he was rescuing that cat? That's a bunny. <laughs> what fruit of the spirit was he showing, Temple? What was he showing? Yes, kindness. Wallace, what was he showing? He said goodness. Goodness, yes. What if, let's say you're lining up for recess. Yeah. <laughs> the teacher won't let you go until the line is quiet. You wait for everyone to be quiet. What fruit of the spirit is this? Yes. Yes. Self-control. Any others? Yes. Waiting. Yes. Patience. Yes. Being quiet. Patience. Yeah. <laughs> Fruit of 
the Spirit have you shown lately? There's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What have you shown, Echo? Um, kindness. How did you show kindness? Well, did you help your sister with something? Did you help your mom out? Well, sometimes I clean up my room and make my bed for my mom. Oh, that's kindness. Key right there. Coco? Mm -hmm. What fruit of the Spirit have you shown? Love. How have you shown love? Being nice. Being nice, yeah. Eve, what about you? So, um, Alice is coming over to my house oh. today, and... Uh-huh. My mom told me to make my bed so so she could be so I cook so she so be clean when she can. What fruit of the spirit do you think that is? Kindness. Yeah, kindness. What about you, Wallace? Kindness. Kindness. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Eli Davis, and I am reading the. Oh. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Eli Davis, and I'm reading the with me for doing good. Um, I will read the Bring Your text, text. Please read along with the bold. God help us uh, to not be afraid. Help us to have faith in your love. For we know that you, with every blessing, your room contains. And you give, give us good gifts. Keep us from the distract, distraction of uh, accumulating possessions. Keeping up reputations, reputations. Collecting accolades. And, and storing up treasures that fade with the time. For we know that where our treasure is, our, our hearts are there too. Help us to devote our lives to prayer and doing good. To manage our inner selves. To clean up our hearts. That we may be like you, shine with beauty. For you delight in those who cease to do evil. Learn, Learn to do good. good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the lonely. And we want to shine with all of your love, light, generosity, and compassion. Into every hurt and place and person. Galatians 5, 22-23. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Where we hear the voice of of God through these words. Thanks, Thanks be God. God.
fruit of the spirit I chose to talk about today was peace. I chose peace because it, because it is very hard to maintain and practice peace in our everyday lives. I think peace is important because having peace with one another makes it easier for us to communicate and find solutions to our problems instead of arguing and disagreeing with things that other people think. Another reason peace is so important is that if we don't practice having peace with one another, it is much harder for us to connect and have fun with one another. I think we can practice peace by cooperating and working together instead of fighting, arguing, and ignoring each other. We can also practice peace by listening to everyone's entire idea instead of instantly thinking it is a bad idea or it is incorrect. Um, picture this. You and your brother are both very hungry, so you go to get a snack. You notice that there's only one donut left in the box from this morning. You both race to the box and your brother knocks you over and you yell at him. You get to your feet and he is already licking his fingers. Instead of fighting, you remember the fruit of the spirit sermon from Sunday and decide to talk it out with him and you make an agreement for the next time you have donuts, you get the last one. All is well because you have practiced peace. This is for you two parents. <laughs> we can talk through our disagreements and arguments so we can have peace instead of ignoring the situation and making it worse to where it is uncontrollable. This is one of many ways to help maintain peace between one another. Peace is very important, is a very important trait to have in practice. If we all practice peace, our world can become a better place for everyone to live in. Yeah. 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 Hi, I'm Connor, and today I'm going to talk to you about patience. Can you wait? Yeah. <laughs> Me either. I'll go ahead and get started. As I was thinking about what I was going to say about patience today, I started with different examples of when I have been patient. I came up with three different ways that I'm patient. When I talk about each of these examples, I'm sure you have your own stories that pop into your head. I'm obviously not a professional when it comes to patience. <laughs> the first way that I have worked on being more patient has to do with time or events. I think most of us have sat in a classroom and stared at a clock, willing it to get to three o'clock a little faster. <laughs> We're all here today, so I assumed that we all made it through those school days. And let's be honest here, I think everyone in this room has been counting down the seconds for 2020 to be over, me included. The second way that I am patient is, has to do with things or objects. They don't have feelings, so I usually don't feel bad when I'm being impatient with them. For example here, I started riding the bus to school this year. We've only been in school for six weeks, but my bus has been late every single day. Some days are better than others, but it's consistently late. You might think that I would be impatient with the bus driver, but I know that there's a shortage of bus drivers right now, and mine is doing his best. Like I said earlier though, I don't feel bad thinking mean thoughts about a bus. <laughs> That leads me to the third way that I'm practicing using patience. For me, this is the most difficult. I'm talking about having patience with people. I think that the reason that it feels more difficult is because sometimes having patience with other people reminds, requires them have, to have patience with me. And that's something that's out of my control. I think we've all lost our patience with our family members before. My example has to do with my dad. So, a couple weeks ago, my dad was helping me out with his homework, or with my homework. <laughs> no, guys. He was losing his cool with me, and my go-to response is usually to act the same way right back to him. For whatever reason, this time I instead decided to take a breath, stay calm, and be patient with him. As a result, it gave him space to calm down, and we were able to communicate more effectively. My patience was a mirror, and my dad was able to be patient in return. This was a much easier way for me to get help with my math homework. 
As I was researching patience, I learned that Christianity isn't the only religion to speak about patience. Both, both Islam and Buddhism also speak on the subject. Why do you think that is? My personal belief is these major religions are all talking about patience because it's important. We should use it every day, especially if you ride my bus. <laughs> Some days and some situations are easier than others to have patience. But people, what I'm saying is that, that we have, that it is important. Can you imagine a world if, like, what the world would be like if we didn't have patience? <laughs> Speaking about, to you about patience really makes those times that I've been impatient stand out. I'm most impatient when I'm stressed or feel pressured in the situation. For me, when I find I cannot be patient anymore, I lash out, I get loud, I say unkind things in the moment. It's not pretty, and it's not my proudest moment. So, what can I do to be more patient? Take notes. This could help all of us. <laughs> like I said, I know about myself when I'm stressed or under pressure. I am quickest, or quicker to impatience. So, it's important for me to be aware in situations like that so that I can take a moment to calm down before I try to move forward. Definitely before I talk to people. I like to have a moment by myself, but when I can't, it's important for me to breathe. I learned at school last week that a deep breath releases dopamine into your system. Do you know what dopamine does to your body? It gives us joy and calms us down, and that's the mindset that I need to be in if I'm gonna be patient, especially if I'm gonna be patient with my family. Love you, Dad. <laughs> so, to follow this fruit of the Spirit, be sure to set yourself up for success. Take a moment to calm down, calm yourself down if you're able, and, but even if you're not, take a deep breath and remember how important it is to be patient. Let's pray. God, help us all be more patient. Let us see when we need a little space for a deep breath. Let us be patient with other people especially our families, and most importantly with ourselves. When we are patient with ourselves, it's easier to be patient with everyone else, and we could all use a little more patience in our lives these days. Amen. He looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Christ has no body now but yours. some shakers over there. You can hear them. Oh. Don't you think we should give these kids like a huge hand? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, they, they, <laughs> they, uh, they wrote their reflections, they rehearsed, and they did great. So thank you to every kid who participated and every parent who supported that participation. <laughs> All right, here, we're going to sing our benediction song. We usually sing this in our in-person services. Here we go.
Thanks, everyone.